All right, so let's continue on with this lesson by talking about the client. So we talked a little bit about the server and how the server provides the data. And that server code, you know, again, sort of like doesn't really belong in our app. It would normally be a separate project and be running in the cloud somewhere. But this client code does belong in our app. And so this is a lot more um, idiomatic in terms of what you would see in an actual Android application. And yet again, as part of MB2, you know, it's really part of your goal here is really to understand the code that you've been given and write something similar. Um, you know, and this is something that you do, you know, as you're learning computer science and you're starting to do more complicated things is, you know, a good way to make forward progress is sort of mimic stuff, right? Like find something, do something similar um, to solve a slightly different problem. But understanding what's there first is usually kind of helpful. So let's go through the get restaurants method in our in our client.kt file. And we'll talk a little bit about what it does. And then we'll do some tracing with the main activity so we can kind of see the order in which things happen, which might surprise you a little bit. So the get restaurants is what's used to retrieve the list of restaurants from the, from the server. We talked about the use of callbacks in network programming, this idea that uh, what's passed to get restaurants is a callback. And this is actually one of the cooler things about Kotlin. This is a, so callback here is a method. We're passing a method to get restaurants. This is a method that accepts a nullable list of restaurants and doesn't return anything. So this is how in Kotlin you can provide a type for a method that gets called, that gets passed to another method. Now in our main activity, when we call this, this is the method that's being passed. You'll see this method accepts, in this case, R, which if I type it, is a list of restaurants, and it doesn't return anything. Um, now, this syntax is also uh, kind of unique to Kotlin. This is something that's called trailing lambda syntax. And so let me show you, you might be wondering, like, this looks really weird. It's like you're calling get restaurants, but you're not, what are you passing to it? It doesn't seem like it's receiving an argument. Um, and I can change it to look like this. And then maybe that makes you a little bit more comfortable with the situation because now there are parentheses. Um, but in Kotlin, if I have a method and the method as its last parameter, as its last parameter accepts another method, what I can do is I can move that method outside of the parentheses if I'm going to provide a method literal or a lambda method, right, or a lambda function. And so this is a call to get restaurants where the argument that's being passed is this method. And this is a method that matches the type that get restaurants expects, which is a method that takes a list of restaurants and returns nothing. And you'll see, we call that method. And this is you know, one of the signs when you work in Kotlin that you're working with the language that has support for what are called first class functions. Java, like, sort of, kind of doesn't, but Kotlin does. So in Kotlin, I can save a function to a variable. Uh, I could actually save this method to a variable and then pass the variable to get, get restaurants. I, I don't need to do that, just will clutter, clutter up the code. Um, and I can also receive a method. Uh, I can also pass a method as a parameter to a function. So this is a function that is a parameter takes another function. And you'll see, we're calling that other function. This is callback. Callback is one of the parameters to my method. And down here, I'm calling callback like the method that it is. And I'm passing it, in this case, a list of restaurants and on failure, null. Um, so this is one of the you know really sort of powerful things about Kotlin is that it opens up this whole new programming pattern of being able to use um, first class functions, save methods and variables, pass them to other methods and return them from other methods. I can have a method that returns a method. Um, we, we don't have an example of that here, but that's certainly possible in Kotlin. Okay, so let's go through and, and look at this code carefully and try to understand what, what's going on. So we're using um, an Android networking library called Volley. And Volley is gonna take care of most of the kind of grubby details of actually making the network request and retrying if it fails and doing a bunch of other things for us. What we need to do is describe what we want to happen. And you'll see here that I'm creating a new, what's called a string request um, object. This is, uh, describes a request that should return a string. So what we expect to get back is a string from the server that contains, in this case, because we're asking for the restaurant's route, 
all the restaurants in JSON format. And we know this because we wrote the server. So whenever you write, you know, you work with the client server application, particularly if you're exchanging data, you do need to know something about what the server does. You don't have to know how it's implemented, um, but it's not enough to know the protocol. You also need to know like kind of what's going to happen, right? What is it sending me? Um, you know, and, and how do I use this information? So in this case, we wrote both. And so we know exactly what the server's response is going to be in this case, which is going to send us this JSON array where every JSON object in it contains information about a restaurant in the Champaign-Urbana area. So, so we're, we're formulating the request. When we talked about the server and we talked about HTTP protocol, we talked about get. So this is a get request. We need to pass the path that we want, the, the URL to the server. This is essentially the same thing you would type into your browser, right? If you look at what server URL is, uh, it contains HTTP, so this is an HTTP request. Now, what gets passed to the string request as its third and fourth parameter are two additional callbacks. So this is like callbacks inside callbacks inside callbacks. Because the idea is that the string uh, volley wants to know, what do I do if the request succeeds? And then you also have to tell it, what do I do if it fails? So the code that runs on success is up here. And what we do is we take the string, which is the response. If I go up here, I can see that this is a string, a nullable string. Um, I take it and I use the Jackson library to deserialize it into a list of restaurants. And this code is little gobbledygooky. I will not deny it. I am not super happy. You know, we, we build these MPs and like we have these you know, beautiful dreams of how we're going to do things. And then from time to time, we run across something and it's like, oh no, do I have to do that? It's like, sorry, this is what this is. This is like, this will not appear on the quiz, right? This is this inane little bit of, like I said, syntactic gobbledygook. Um, but what it does is it takes the string and converts it to a list of restaurants by doing automatic deserialization. This is normally what you would do, right? I have my restaurant model, it matches the data. And then I use the data to produce a list of these restaurant objects, which I can then do other things with. And then I return that to the caller, right? So the caller gave me a method to call when the request completed, and I call it with the list of restaurants. If there's a problem, so either if there's a problem with the data and I can't deserialize it properly, or if there's a problem with the request, I call the callback with null. Now, as the comments indicate, this is not really the best way to do this. You know, there are better ways to handle errors, but those ways involve slightly more complicated programming patterns. And we felt like this method was probably enough as it is. So in this case, our convention is gonna be, we'll just call the callback with null if something goes wrong. Then down here, this is actually, you know, this is an easy line to miss, but this is the line where we actually ask for the request to be done. So we create this request object and then this request queue is something that Volley that we created earlier. And by adding it to this queue, we tell Volley, please perform this request. And what Volley does is it takes a request, it uses the fields to figure out what to do, and it uses these callback methods to figure out what to do when the request finishes. So now let's trace the operation of these callbacks. So remember, the idea here is that I don't want to actively wait for the re response from the server. I want to be able to make the response go about doing other things and have the server have the sorry have the volley library notify me when the request is completed and then I'll do things. Um, so let's go over to main activity and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some log in here. So I'm going to do log.d trace and I'm going to call say calling get restaurants. So one of the things that's tricky about callbacks and callback methods is they distort our sense of the order in which code runs. So if you read this code, you might think, oh, okay, this code is going to run after I call get restaurants, but we're gonna see that that's actually not the case. Uh, so I'm gonna say uh, continuing, I'll say continuing with main activity below this. Um, now I'm gonna, over, and, and I'll put another log message in here. Um, I'll say uh, log dot, sorry, log, log dot, log dot D trace uh, get, get restaurants completed. And as we're going, you might want to like challenge yourself and think a little bit about like, what do I expect to happen, right? What, what, what order do I expect to see this? Um, so let's put one down here. We'll say log.d trace um, queuing 
uh, request for restaurants. Put that in here. And then here I'll say uh, log.d request completed. Or I'll say restaurant request. Oh, sorry. I have to use a tag. Trace um, restaurant request completed. Cool. OK. Uh, and now let's run the app here. Uh, because I want to see these log messages. And, and again, like while we're waiting for the app to run, as a challenge, you might ask yourself, like, what in what order? Oh, I need to import this, don't I? Okay. Yeah, you might ask yourself, like, in what order do I think these statements are actually going to run, right? Uh, which one runs first? Which one runs second? Which one runs third? Um, and and try to puzzle that through because. You know, that's the thing. Once we start passing methods around, that method might, be, might not be called right away. So it looks like the code is right there. So it looks like we should execute one line after another. But as you start to, you know, uh, improve and develop your sophistication as programmers, you're going to realize that that's not how code works. It doesn't always run top to bottom. With callback methods, they can run later, uh, may run out of order. Um, all right, so let's look at our log cat and let's look for a trace. Um, and I don't. Uh, let's see here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, you'll see the first one that runs is calling get restaurants. And then it says queuing requests for restaurants. So I, I get in the client code, I construct the request, and then I queue it. But I haven't seen this one, and I haven't seen uh, this one run either, right? Then I see continuing with main activity. So now the idea is that the request is in the system. It's been submitted to Volley. And then the next thing that'll happen is the request response callback gets run. It says restaurant, well, restaurant re request completed. It does the deserialization. It calls the callback. And then the last thing that happens is I see get restaurants completed in the main activity. So the main activity uh, calls get restaurants, which constructs the response, the, the request. It submits the request. Some time goes by while the server responds. One thing I would say that you might want to do is actually add some logging to the server to see the server get involved, right? Because what will happen is after continuing with main activity, you probably see the server receive the request, respond with the requested information, and then Bali completes the request, the callback runs, which then calls the callback that was registered by main activity, right? So it's like one callback triggering another callback, right? Which is, it turns out exactly what happens here. Cool. Okay. So, so this is, you know, uh, this is a case where, you know, like many other parts of the MP and specifically parts of MP2, we're really asking you to mimic existing code. So you have get restaurants. This is a good model to follow. And you essentially need to do something very similar. You need to construct a request. The, the route's going to be a little bit different, right? So you need to ask for a different path from the server because if you ask for restaurants, you're going to get restaurant data. And what you want is preference data. So go back and look at what you did for the server code in the previous uh, part of this checkpoint, previous part of this uh, lesson. Um, and then, you know, work through some of the similar code, right? Same programming pattern, return null on failure, things like that. Um, and, and you'll get this to work, right? And hopefully in the process of doing this, you know, you're starting, you know, we're, we're starting to talk through some of these concepts like a callback, right? Like the idea of a client making a request and then receiving information a little bit later. Um, these are really, really critical, you know, powerful ideas in computer science. If you master some of these patterns, um, if you understand how to build even a simple full stack application, you know, you can conquer the world. I mean, that's what Facebook is, right? We're, or that's what it was that's when, it, when it started out, right? All these things that you use that you think are like so transformative are fundamentally just client server applications pushing data around, right? Is there a little bit more intelligence in some of them than that? Sure, right? But at the beginning, there wasn't. They were just really simple examples of request data, retrieve data, request data, retrieve data. You can make it a long way uh, based on just those two steps.